for being uh, so. So, as I, um, I am coming from water, but I'm also a bit trying to represent the ISO um, in, in that discussion. And um, when we speak about smart, uh, we probably don't have all the same definition of smart. Uh, there are smart tools, but uh, the difficulty, what does it mean a smart city? And uh, for example, in the water, we don't, we speak of, of course, as everybody of smart city, but we more push in the IWA, the International Water Association, we uh, push the uh, notion of water-wise city. The, the vision of smart for us is uh, a city uh, which is wise and not only uh, smart. Uh, that means that we consider that smart tools have to be uh, used in order to be more wise. I do uh, agree that probably you can be wise but slow or you can try to go quicker and to be wiser <coughs> thanks to smart attitude or smart tools. Uh, in a certain way, the ISO has been trying to define what is a smart city. So I would like just to, to remember, and I'm going to read because I know that in normalization it's important to use the right name and the right words. A smart city should be described as one that dramatically increases the pace at which it improves uh, sustainability and resilience by fundamentally improving how it engages society how it applies collaborative leadership methods, how it works across disciplines and city systems, and how it uses data and integrated technology in order to transform services and quality of life to those in and involved with the city. So it's smart, the smart city is more in the objective although the, you, you, you have to go quick because you have to increase the pace so it's the velocity you do that. So I propose to go back a bit in the, uh, uh, with the vision of a, of a water inside that uh, vision. So I think in, uh, in the case of water, we, we have to take care that the, water, the city has to be resilient, and I will come back on that, attractive, uh, that the water management must preserve and improve the environment. It's one of our mission when we are in charge of uh, water, water and wastewater. Where we have a responsible resource use, we more and more try to reduce um, the use of water, uh, like you have been discussing about uh, reducing the, uh, the use of energy. So we have the same kind of uh, vision. So it's very important to, to, to look at those aspects, and uh, I propose to, to go back a bit with you, separating a bit the different aspects of, uh, of a city uh, on the point of view of, of water. I would like to try, if we look all that axis, one which is important is the attractiveness of the city. Um, and I, being in Singapore, I suppose that you have, uh, if you have been able to visit Singapore or if you know Singapore and the, um, the way Singapore is uh, dealing with the water, water has been a very important part of the development of Singapore because they need to be careful on water. They are dependent to Malaysian uh, country on water, so they are very keen on water. But afterward, they have been developing a sense of how you use water, how the city can be uh, improved by, by seeing the water. So the, the water is in itself also a way of attract people and attract economy, but attract also the citizens. So starting by attractivity of the city, I would like to, Trevor, to ask you a bit. You, ha you have been award in 2015 uh, to in, in an award of smart city. So I, I would like you to explain a bit why what did you do in, in uh, Petersburg, which was so in, interesting to be reward? Did you make lots of lobby, or you consider that really you, 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 it was reasonable? Can you explain a bit the, the smart city you had and uh, how you did that globally? Okay, yes. Uh, thank you, Diane, for, for the introduction. And uh, it's a great pleasure to, to be here uh, representing uh, Peterborough, which... Uh, although it's a fine city, can't compete with uh, Singapore in terms of uh, scale of uh, attractions and, and so on. Um, 
Before I come back to the, the particular uh, point you raise about the Smart City, uh, World Smart City Award 2015 and some of the background to that, um, I thought it might be appropriate just to give my perspective on, uh, on water and, and the various complexities of it, and which will be well known, I'm sure, to, to much of, of, of the audience. But um, it's often forgotten in a, in a rainy country like, uh, like the UK that we are in many parts, certainly in the, the bit that Peterborough is located in the, the east of the country, we are water stressed in that there's more water abstracted than falls from the sky, which is hard to believe some days uh, uh, in, in the UK. Um, so water is a, a very important uh, part to us. I think also what makes water unique from uh, the other utilities, the other pain points, if you like, that we're we're picking up today um, is that it's almost, well, it is impossible to separate it from the other aspects, such as uh, energy that we've already heard discussed in the first panel, but also from food. And I think that's uh, often overlooked. It is one of the, the building blocks of, of life. Uh, it's part of the food chain. Uh, it's used in the production of food and so on. So it has a very special um, sort of uh, level of, of complexity. Um, and overlaid on that, of course, is the recre recreational and attractiveness of, of water, as, as you mentioned. Uh, so there's a, a level of complexity uh, there when you, when you look at it as a, as a subject. I think in the UK, and again, it may be very different to, to other uh, countries and cities represented here, there's also a, a level of complexity at the administrative level, which is quite uh, interesting. Um, in that as a commodity, it passes, water passes through many hands before it reaches the consumer. Um, it, the, the obviously, uh, central government is responsible for policy. You have local authorities who are responsible for the surface water as it falls in their particular towns or cities. Um, you have the water companies that provide uh, water. It's been privatized in the UK since uh, 1989. That provide clean water and deal with wastewater. Um, and amongst all of that, you have the Environment Agen Agency responsible for pollution, um, and indeed Ofwat, who's responsible for regulating many of the uh, or the companies and the structures involved. So there's multiple levels of, of, of complexity uh, involved, which I think is you know really interesting to explore as part of, of the panel today. In terms of Peterborough and in terms of the Smart City Award. Um, we're one of uh, four future city demonstrators uh, in the UK. Um, so we've been uh, dealing with smart city initiatives at the community level uh, for two or three uh, years now. Um, and one of the reasons we got the uh, award in, in 2015 was really uh, our thinking around um, the involvement of, of citizens, putting citizens at the heart of, of what we do. We have a phrase that, that we use uh, repeatedly, which is about um, putting the human back into smart cities, if you like, because often the debate in the early years was very much technically focused and often forgot um, about the very people that, that would, would benefit from, uh, from smarter, more efficient, efficient cities. And in particular around our smart cities, it's our new thinking, uh, and again, this was mentioned in the, in the earlier panel, um, our, our early thinking around circular city. So we have an initiative called Circular Peterborough, which at this point is, is really a debate about how you make a small to medium-sized city uh, circular uh, in its operation. How do you try and build that resilience, that community capability, um, in order that, that the, the, the city can, uh, can be much stronger for it? There are in England, uh, in UK, sorry, in UK, I've never seen in England or UK, some experience of uh, local money which have been done uh, with, uh, in order to stimulate the economy. Did you, did you do that in uh, Petersburg or not? Because there are one or two uh, cities in England uh, who have been doing their own money and they exchange inside the city. Mm. It's a strange uh, yeah. thing, but... Um... No, we, we've, we've not looked at that specifically, okay. but in, uh, in the, the approach to circular economy, it is about um, sharing in many different ways, so using uh, one commodity or service in exchange for another at a community level, a business level, whatever. Very hard um, challenges to tackle, but ones we, th we think we need to have a debate on. Yeah. I was giving that example because it's, in circular economy, you, you, you organize in order that uh, someone can, can deliver uh, waste and the other one take it. Mm. But uh, in, in some part, it has been gone 
even further because you, you can pay with the local uh, money. Mm. So it's quite interesting to know that you, you have uh, that in, in UK. I don't know if there was a link with the Brexit mm. but, uh, <laughs> or starting to think of Brexit. Although I have to say, and I, said, uh, I would say that to your public, <laughs> that um, Petersburg was the second city in in UK for uh, voting in favor of Brexit. So maybe by developing your sense of community, uh, they started to say, why should we be part of Europe? Mm. So it's, there are some risks. <laughs> okay. I think that's for another panel. That one. <laughs> <laughs> so, I started by the attractiveness of the city because it's, it's probably uh, in, in the water business, it's very important. I mean, you probably not have so much, ex except if you start to say that you need electricity for light, and light is part of attractiveness of, of city. But the water, we have that sense. So I would like to come back a bit uh, now on, on one part which is also part of uh, attractiveness. In water, you have, of course, to deliver drink, uh, drinkable water, water mm -hmm. uh, for... for for drink and quality of the water is important. And in, you have the, also the uh, wastewater retreating in order to re put in the uh, nature. So the quality is very important. Mm -hmm. So Alicia, I think you, you have lots of tools in order to control water quality, in order to uh, the quality of the... Can you speak about all the development of those sensors? It's mm -hmm. quite... Now there are more, but... 20 years ago, we didn't have so many uh, sensors, so we developed. What do we do with that? Uh, do we store them or do we use online? What, what is your experience in, in the use of those uh, tools? Well, thanks for the introduction. Um, just to give some context of what we are doing, we are in the, in the perspective of sensing, so we basically integrate any sensor with any communication protocol, and we make it possible to upload any data to the cloud. We are working in this uh, interoperability need, which is the, the most repeated word so far today, <laughs> and, and it will be at the end of the day, I'm totally sure, with any, any cloud system. So regarding water, we started working with uh, water sensors two years ago. And, and in, the, in the case of monitoring the quality, there are several aspects to take care of. Um, if you look at the, um, at the production uh, point of view of water quality, uh, you can think of uh, fish farms, for example. And we have many fish farms in this region here in, in Asia. Um, the productivity of the, of the fish is increasing 25% every year. And at the same time, we are seeing losses in, in, those, in, in those productions because of, of fishes dying. So that's something that you can enhance by, by monitoring the appropriate parameters like the dissolved oxygen and the, uh, and the temperature of the water and taking care also of the ORP um, in the water. That's also the... Um, Regarding the attractiveness of the city, the, the water quality of the rivers and, and the sea, on the, and the, the, even in, when you are jumping in the, in the swimming pool, we are getting, all the citizens are getting more aware of the quality, not only of the air that we are breathing, but also of the water where we are uh, having fun. And in Spain, we are very proud of our beaches. We have the... Uh, the blue flag, naming the, the best beaches that we, that we have. And, and from, the, from the latest years, we are, we are also offering the, the measurements of the water quality of the sea. So that gives you an idea of how important is that for the citizens and for the, and for the tourism. So it's, it's big, today it's online analysis and you can even give uh, what, what we see it, is true also in, in other countries. You can give to the people. You can you can go and base in the city. It's okay yeah. because I've been measured and, and then it is exactly. And just to give you a, a very specific ex example on how it works, uh, we are doing a, pro a project with a water plant, uh, water treatment plant in the north of Spain, and and they are thanks to the um, to the process of of making online those measurements. 
they, um, they are optimizing the use of the, the water treatment plant. So they are, uh, the results are a 40% of savings by making it faster, the detection of the, um, of the, the, um, the action plans they need to, to put in action in an average of 40 to 80% faster than not doing that uh, in an online way. So just by making the, the measurements online, it's a big difference. Optimization and, of, yep. and mainly on energy? Or mm -hmm. is it, what do you save? Energy, manpower, or, or you know that? Or pr chemical products, or is it a reduce, you said you save? You said yep. the cost, is it mainly on, on energy cost, or you know that, no? Um, it's usually the mixture of, uh, uh, of course, chemicals, but, uh, it's, uh, but, but basically, the sooner you detect a problem, the less waste you are producing, the less chemicals you need to use to, to, to clean that water. So that's basically the, the whole compose of that. Okay. Maybe we, we speak about uh, information. Mm -hmm. How do you bring back that information? By radio? By by uh, you use the electricity in order to bring back the information? Or you, you, what is your technology? All our devices are battery power, which is a big innovation in, in the water industry. Usually the sensors uh, need always a high power to, to work. In, in our case, the, all the sensors that we are working with are, can be battery power. And we are always using wireless sensors. So it doesn't matter if they are SIGV, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or cellular technologies, or even those narrowband new technologies like Sigfox or LoRa, we are compliant with all of them. So maybe I will uh, challenge a bit, Mr. Singwin. What is your vision on, on those? Uh, what is the way to bring back? Because uh, do you have a clear vision, or do you, do you have to adapt to a different way of bringing back data? Because yes, there are lots of technology for, for the moment, and um, lots of discussion of what is the best. So what is your vision on that? Yes, thank you, Diana. And we think that for the water issues in, in cities and in the background of buildings, smart sustainable cities, we think it's very important to have. We, we would suggest that you separate these issues into two parts. The first one is water facilities or water infrastructure. And then the second one is what is itself. So it, it will make the issue very clear. And uh, then we can try to find what is the best way to, to, have, uh, to improve the quality of water and to make uh, the ICT technologies very efficient in water processes. So generally, we think for the what facilities uh, we would suggest that some of the technologies can be used to, for example, interrupt of things and uh, just, uh, uh, just speak that uh, uh, technologies can be used to improve the uh, water facilities and uh, for sanitations and uh, we we have evaluation for the efficiency of sanitation, wastewater processing, and water detections, and so on, and water pollution provisions. So that is the point one. For the water itself, and we would suggest that some of the measurement on water, so we can use some of the ICT technologies, for example, uh, smart uh, uh, meterings, and we can also use some of the technologies, just like uh, cloud computing, to to connect the information of the water distributions and so on. So that it will make the work very efficient. And currently, we think that uh, now is the forum for IEC, ISO, and IT. We think that. Uh, it's very important to have a standardization work in water. And uh, so uh, 
uh, we will try to get uh, the indicators, uh, some of the work to, to evaluate an achievement of the cities to, to improve the water facilities and the water qualities. So that what we have done in, in, the, in the nearest uh, years. And we will also work on these work items. I will come back on water meters and, uh, and that part. Uh, just, Alicia, again, um, we have been speaking of COP21 this morning. Uh, it was, uh, of course, in the water business, we take care of electricity. We try to reduce. Uh, some, mm -hmm. some tools help us to reduce electricity, to be more uh, aware of that. But I have to say that uh, at the COP22, uh, we as IWA, International Water Association, we are going to say that, uh, in fact, we are going to be impacted by the climate change. Because the first big impact of climate change is to give us either too much water or not enough. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it is, we, we are going to deal with a, a change. And, uh, and either we have too much, and uh, we see that now in big events uh, everywhere, in fact, in, in the world, flood event with all the problems. Mm -hmm. So what do, and I will come back on lack of water, but on, when you have too much uh, water, what can you do? What does you, what is your vision of the evolution of the technology and, and how the uh, smart city will deal with too much water? Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a very good point to have too much or not too enough and not, not when you specifically need that. Uh, in the case of, of river floodings, uh, we are seeing the, that's totally attached to the, to the word resilience, the ability to react mm -hmm. in front of those kind of disasters. We have several, we are working with several cities, especially in rural areas, to monitor the, um, the river levels by ultrasound sensors and, and what, transmit that wirelessly to, to different control stations. That way we can raise alerts when several, when the level of the rivers are racing at a certain speed. It's not only about knowing the level, but about the speedness of the increasing in the, in the level. So uh, we have a pro, uh, several projects in, in different parts of Asia, and there's also another one in, in the northeast of Spain, where, um, where we are working with the local municipality to provide them with those tools. In those cases, what they are doing is to use the information to raise an alert to the population, because sometimes they know that if level is three meters in that part of the mountain, I have two hours to evacuate this whole area. So knowing that on time is, is critical to, to save lives in, in many cases. Yeah, that is a good point. On the city itself, I can speak of an experience of a tool we Suez is using and, and developing. Uh, for example, the city of Bordeaux is a city where you can have some very strong uh, uh, f f f well, rain water suddenly. Mm -hmm. So you have to optimize the network, the use of your network in order to, uh, to anticipate. You can one hour before mm -hmm. try. And how do you know that you have to anticipate? Because we, you are connected to the radar, and the radar gives you some good evaluation of what will happen in one or two hours, because you, you can anticipate rain. Uh, with, and most of the time in big cities, you have rain in a side, but not in the, in the other mm -hmm. side. So you can work a little better with a good modelization of what is going and how you use your, your uh, uh, rainwater pipes in order. So it is also um, done now in, in Singapore. There is a, a program for, for optimizing the, uh, uh, the rainwater. So it's exactly what can bring uh, smart tools. You, you, you have an, anticip an anticipation of your rain, you modelize, you use that, and then you optimize your network and you can, of course, also give some, uh, some alert to people or mm -hmm. to your people because they have to, to start. Mm -hmm. You can start with pump, but you have also. So on flood and resilience of cities, uh, it is very important. Online tools can really, really be uh, mm -hmm. very important and, and increase because most of time uh, when there are some accidents, it's because people were not 
aware of it. I mean, you, you, you can have a, that is a, a great change in, in, in and tools, uh, smart tools are really useful for that, for the resilience. Um, we can try also to predict a little bit more, but that's still, uh, still to do, in fact. What will happen with uh, two degrees more? Uh, what can we expect in our cities? What will happen? That it is unfortunately still unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that economically we can probably uh, uh, limit to two degrees, but honestly nobody knows exactly what will be the impact. We don't know yet. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit difficult to anticipate. Uh, and uh, that's where probably mm -hmm. models and, and analysis and big data will be useful. I would like to come back to the, um, the other part, which is, okay, too much water sometimes and not enough. Uh, it's clear that um, the climate change means uh, for, uh, for, for us that probably uh, there would be some place where you will have less water. And so what do we do to, to anticipate that? Mm -hmm. What can be solutions? Um, first one is what we call smart, smart meter. You have said that mm -hmm. uh, the water business is starting to have smart meters. In electricity, you are used with that for years and years. Uh, in the water, it's not so um, developed. For first reason is the bill of water is not at all the same level of a bill of electricity. So you have some difficulties sometimes to sell the smart meter. So it's, it's still in development, mm -hmm. and it's, but it's new. I mean, it's starting. So smart meters, again, smart meters by radio, smart meters by electricity. Uh, what are your vision on that? There are some big debates on, can I use the uh, electricity network to bring back the information, or should I use another? Um, the, um, it's, it's okay, people are discussing. Uh, have you an opinion on uh, what is the best solution? Maybe I would challenge you, depending what you, you will answer. Yeah. Yes, thank you. What is your vision on smart meter in water? How do you do that, and how do you bring the information? Yes, we think that uh, the most and most important issue is water itself. And you know that for the climate, for the climate change and uh, the distribution of water uh, is not uh, uh, equally, and uh, so, for example, in China, we have too much water in South China and too less water in North China, and uh, we are trying to bring the water from South China to North China, and then we we need to try to find the solution to to metering the efficiency of the water and how they can bring they, how how they can bring. Uh, well-being well to the citizens of the cities and how the ICT technology to measure the efficiencies, to measure smart, so a smart metering can play an important, uh, impo important uh, uh, role in, in this process. Okay. And we, we, we have tried to use some of the technologies, for example, we can combine it with uh, uh, telecommunications technology to to detect the, the, the to detect the, the pollution and the quality of water and also to bring the water to to the some of the part so that is what we have done for this uh, for these visions of water and also we think that for the, you know that for the urbanization and um, more and more people to go to the cities and uh, it is important to provide the drinking water for, for, for the people. And also we have this measurement to how, the, how, how the effective this for this, for, the, for this process. We think ICT can bring a very, very important uh, role in this, in this area and we have done to use some of the interoffices technologies, uh, uh, SCAD uh, systems, and also cloud computing, this technology to, to, to do in, the, in this work. And we think that we still have a lot of keep, keep analysis in how this can be done in the, in the future. And 
Okay, so let, that is our vision for the future work of water management. Yeah. That's okay. true that um, in the uh, water uh, network, <coughs> the development of tools uh, have been uh, really interesting. In fact, I've been, as a water uh, professional, I've been dreaming of having a smart meter for 30 years. It was not possible, it was difficult, now you can get it. And you imagine to be able to see how much you consume water and, and compare how much uh, you, you, you produce. Um, I remember that 30 years ago we were doing that once a year by uh, having the information because you, you had the information once a year. So you, you were comparing production and distribution once a year. It was problematic because sometimes you had a, um, you find that you lose 20% water but sometimes you find that you had more, you, you, you were creating water because your meters were not perfect or it was, mm -hmm. there were some difficulties because you didn't, don't have the information at the same times. I have to say that for an engineer it was interesting because my boss was accepting 20% loose, but he didn't accept that we, I was creating water. It was, for an engineer it was a, a problematic aspect. Mm -hmm. By having now uh, meters uh, that you can have online, you have much more than before the capability to look what it is in that sector and to make sectorization, even to be able to reduce pressure in order to reduce non oven water. And the smart meter, the, the meter that you can have, is really interesting when you want to know, that clear, but also when you want to develop awareness. And I would like to, 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 to ask you again the question on, on what do you think the people are ready to do if we ask them to reduce their consumption in summer or when there is lack? Do you think they would be able to, to do that? What is your feeling about the uh, capability of people to, to reduce consumption just because we ask them? Um, I think the answer has to be uh, yes to that. I think if uh, if people within a, a city understand the reasons for it. The one benefit of things like smart meters and other technologies um, is that people can see for themselves, perhaps on their own smart devices, um, their impact on, on the environment and on some of these uh, big challenges that face us, uh, like, like climate change. So I think um, uh, there, there would uh, very easily be a willingness for, for people to uh, adopt those, uh, those new technologies. I just wanted to pick up a little bit on um, the solutions themselves in a way to, we've mentioned about uh, sort of smart meters and, and uh, reducing water consumption. Um, there's also, um, you know, loss of water at other aspects in the, in the chain, if you like. And one of the approaches we've, we've used uh, in, in Peterborough is a partnership with uh, Anglian Water uh, company, the, the distribution company for our part of, of, of the UK. Um, and that's really about crowdsourcing solutions to challenges that the company has in reducing waste, uh, getting supplies up and running uh, quickly after leakages. And basically the challenges are, are put out there amongst a community of um, small to medium sized businesses uh, essentially. Um, for them to propose solutions to the company. And there are many examples where uh, those ideas have been nurtured into very practical um, solutions that have helped um, uh, along the route to save water, reduce costs, improve efficiency, um, or whatever. So that, that sort of collaborative approach to, to finding solutions, I think, is also um, a, an interesting way of looking at the world. Before coming back to how to manage to reduce and what are the tools we can use uh, uh, to use less water, um, I would like to, to answer a question about um, developing countries. I've been speaking on, on a smart city where there is, in a certain way, uh, water for everybody and it's, people are happy, but uh, two billion people in the world don't have uh, water every day, 24 hours. And there is still a lot of place in the world, which means that we speak on smart, but uh, in fact in the water we are more in the uh, sustainable development and sustainable development of the city, which there is a, a new uh, norm. ISO just launched uh, a, a norm on that. 
And in the UN nation, they even push uh, what they call the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which uh, precise what is the objective of a city and of a country. And the water is very important. It's, it's one of the uh, axes of, of is mm -hmm. the axis six. But in fact, if you look at the other, because you speak about else, you speak about, then always you have water and water. So we, we have some very precise objective uh, on the uh, SDG 6, six but, but we know that water is part. And one of the challenge of uh, the water profession is to solve that. And um, if you, and in fact, if you have 24 hours water, thanks to measurement captors, you stop pumps, you stop pumps, you have reserve, and that, that's easy. But when you have not permanent water, and it is a, a, a point we have to face, you have intermittent water, then it becomes very difficult. Because it's difficult to distribute, and you don't have quality, then you have to, uh, to use other. So one of the question is, what do you do in that case? How do you manage? It's sure that the water professional try to say that the best is to be able to distribute 24 hours. That's easy. But in fact, uh, probably we have to think a bit how we, could we, meanwhile we go to that objective? How can we organize? How can we do in order to be able to, to, uh, to be the best possible even if we don't give, deliver 24 hours? It seems strange. You have that in electricity too. Some place in the world um, doesn't have 24 hours electricity. And I have to say, because I've been in uh, Haiti and I'm, I'm uh, doing some uh, operational assistance in Haiti, that you don't have 24 hours water and there is no 24 hour electricity. And I confirm that for water people, if you don't have electricity, it's not easy to give water. So the first thing for us is if we can have 24 hour electricity, maybe we can a bit improve the water, but we are completely linked, completely linked to electricity, to speak a bit cross, cross uh, silo. And the, um, uh, the first cost in a water distribution is manpower. Mm -hmm. You said that by having captors or things, you can have better efficiency because mm -hmm. you, you avoid uh, doing things. The second one is electricity. 40% of the cost is electricity. It's really a very big amount. And if you have no electricity, it's a problem. So yes, the water business needs electricity, need captors, need to be able to do that uh, and to, to, to develop that. It's very important. Coming back to, for that reason, if you have less water, if you don't have the means of production of water, which means that you have to do rationing, you, you can't give. Uh, all you can do to diminish the, co the consumption is important, or to reuse. We do more in the water, we reuse. You were speaking of uh, eco-efficiency or eco-effectiveness. Eco okay, we do that. Uh, we, we, we have started to do reuse of water. So how do we do? Uh, can you have some example on, on quality? Because reuse, you need to, to be sure of the quality. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, what are you? What are you proposing, or what are you? What is your experience on the, on the water reuse? Well, we have two basically two big areas to to save water. The first one is to avoid the use of water when it's not necessary, which is obvious. But uh, but when when you think of the examples of irrigation of parks and gardens in the cities, those irrigation systems are pre-programmed on a schedule not accordingly to the, to the weather conditions. So just by monitoring the soil moisture and, and turning on and off the irrigation systems, you can just make a more rational uh, use of the, of the water. The other aspect is more related to what you were saying of uh, reuse of the, the water. We have an example of, um, of that in Australia. We are working with, um, with a meat company in the food industry, and, and they are using um, tons of water in their production processes. So waste, uh, wastewater becomes uh, a 
critical aspect of the, of the production process because they, they need to, to manage that. In those cases, they are, they are trying to reuse as much wastewater for irrigation as possible. And, and they are monitoring two things. First, um, they are trying to keep control of the impact of wastewater in groundwater to what extent they may impact on the environment. And on the other hand, um, how much amount of wastewater can they reuse in irrigation systems? So they are monitoring the, the overall wat uh, water quality, measuring uh, many, many different ions dissolving the, in the water to do that. It's, it's uh, clear that um, the uh, water uh, profession is working more and more on the circular economy. Uh, in the water, it's, it's funny to, to speak about circular economy because when you start working in water, you speak about the big cycle and the small cycle, so we have always been in cycle. I mean, you, you, you don't work in water without thinking that you receive water, you use water, you send it back to the sea, and then it goes back, in, and then you have the big cycle. And we, as professionals, we are in the small cycle. We take the water in the river, and we put it back to the river. So what we are going to do, we are going to build more cycles, small, small, small cycle inside the small cycle. That is increasing. Uh, the uh, circularity of the water. Of course, you need to be careful uh, mm -hmm. of quality, uh, but you can also decide that that water has been used for potable use, and now you are going to use for industry, uh, and then afterwards for another. I mean, you, you, you cascade your usage, and you, you start and mm -hmm. you try to keep good water for drinking water, and then you can use the other water mm -hmm. for other purposes, because in fact, in, in the day-to-day -day life, the part of the water you drink is very small, very, very small. It's two or three liters per day. We speak about 150 liters per day for all those uh, aspects, and it's still a very small pieces compared to the industry, and a very, very, very small pieces compared to the agriculture. Maybe interesting for you to know that if I put all the water which is used for a human being per day, inclusive, include, and I include the water for agriculture, we speak about four cubic meter per day, 4,000 liter per day. It's a huge amount, but that part is mainly for agriculture mm -hmm. and for food. So it is natural water, it's rainwater, you have spoken of um, irrigation. Mm -hmm. The irrigation is more and more used because it's a way also of developing the, the, the crops. I mean, it's, it's efficient. But it's true that the irrigation up to now has not been really uh, always very efficient. People put water when it's during day, they should do it. As, so the optimization of the irrigation is really uh, a very big challenge. Mm -hmm. But it's also, it will be thanks to uh, anticipation. Why should you do irrigation if it is going to rain tomorrow? Uh, so the anticipation, the measure, uh, do you need more? So there is a huge part of uh, smart tool which can be developed for irrigation and that it is absolutely necessary because we know that on water we are going to fight with electricity provider with industry, but mainly with agriculture. Mm -hmm. So it's important to, to be able to use uh, those tool, and it's, um, it's very, very important uh, that. Um, to agriculture, we said, so re, re optimization on, on, on that. Uh, maybe on, on transversality, and how can we put water and energy together? Um, again, Water is using lots of energy, not, not lots of energy comparing to others, but for us it's a lot. I mean, it's an, an, an important part. Um, if we try to know how much energy is consumed on water, the order of magnitude is 8% of the energy goes for water. But on the 8%, the main part is for um, having hot water, 
and not for pumping and bringing it at home. That would be two or three percent, no more. Yes, but it's, it's something. I mean, uh, two or three percent. Uh, and um, the very big advantage of water <coughs> is that you can store water. You don't store easily electricity. On the contrary, we are used in our profession to store water because we want to be sure that there will be water when people <coughs> are going to ask. And as we can store, we have the habit to have a capacity of production which is more or less what you need for a day. We don't need capacity of production with peak hours. So we, we, we distribute the water linked. Uh, the peak hour is done by sto storage. We stock storage, and so it's in most of time your your tanks are in in height, and in, and then it goes naturally, and that you can use it, and um, when you have a smart tarification of energy, which I've been seeing that in some countries, uh, as a professional water, you can decide to stop pumping when the energy is at high price, peak hours, or to pump more at night and less uh, during day. That was what I knew 20 years ago, because um, in France, for example, the uh, nuclear energy, they didn't know what to do at night. So they were proposing low price at night, so we were pumping at night when we don't really know, need water, in fact, because people are sleeping. But then, we could use at lower cost. That, on my opinion, is a very important point where uh, a good management of energy and water could bring value for both activity. Because we could perfectly adapt ourselves if energy say, well, I have some peak, very small and peak, not hours, but peak minutes, or uh, I want to, to uh, to reduce the energy for half an hour. We can do it. It's fine. If you give us a good price, we're ready to reduce our production at that time. So you can have a very good uh, thinking, and there are, uh, you speak about smart network, and, and we are very happy if you bring us some tarification and incentives to, to be smart. One example which I sometimes take is about uh, desalination. Um, we can, uh, we have methods for uh, transforming seawater in, 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 in soft water and drinkable water. It's consumed quite a lot energy. Uh, so it's uh, now with solar energy, we, we don't speak anymore that it is a problem for the environment because we can, we can expect to have solar energy for that. But the good, in, the interest also for the, uh, that it would be to to say that we can adapt the uh, desalination to the, uh, the condition of the electricity. So if you have too much electricity uh, during the day because it's solar, uh, we are very happy to produce uh, water at that time. And if you want us to stop during night, no problem. So my vision is uh, we should not integrate energy inside our technology of desalination but we should try to be the most efficient in desalination using the less energy possible and go towards energy people and said, do be smart and propose a smart tarification and we are going to be smart and do the best we can. Mm -hmm. I think each, each of us can do and that it is typically where you can have some good and efficient um, coordination and, and, and stop silos and work together because we clearly can uh, do that yeah. kind of thing. I think there are lots yeah. of examples where we, where we can uh, optimize. And of course, that it is thanks to, to captors, to pumps, to uh, SCADA system, of course. Mm -hmm. you, you need SCADA system, you, you can't do that without that. Uh, but you could also say to your consumer, well, uh, normally we have energy to produce and desalin desalination, but the energy provider asks us to stop a little more. So maybe we can tell, ask you to reduce a bit your consumption. And thanks to smart meter, we could have smart tarification and said them, oh, see, if you can stop using water at that part of the day, then 
uh, you, we could be, have a lower price. So, yeah, you, you want to, yeah. Well, in fact, that's, uh, I was thinking of the, of the smart home. Uh, we are seeing all kinds of gadgets arriving in our homes to control electricity, but none of them is oriented to raise awareness on the, the way that we are using water. So now, from a pure cost perspective, if I compare my electricity bill with my water bill, it's like four times. So from a... Unfortunately for us, yeah. So uh, from, a, from a pure cost uh, perspective, as a home manager, I would say, well, if I need to make an IT investment, I'm going to make an investment in controlling the, the power consumption of my fridge, of my, my lights. I want to receive advices on whether to change the, the fridge for a more optimized one or how to use the electricity in a better way to save money. But there's nothing about water, and there are two problems. First of all is that the cost of water is less, so well, I well, get... At least the price. Yeah, so I get a, a lower incentive from a consumer perspective. And second of all, the equipment to control not only the, the, the consume, but also the, the water quality would be higher. Because we are having more and more conversations with, with uh, partners that want to raise a, a smart taps. Just to raise awareness, not only about um, the, the, the money you are using, but also about the consequences. Mm -hmm. If you take five minutes less in this hour, you would be saving these liters. Okay, so what? No, this means this amount of water could be used, this, this is the equivalent to, to be used in, in irrigation for this amount of, uh, of land. That gives you an idea. And the other, the other um, action that we could raise would be to measure the outbound quality of the water. Because of, co of course, water plants are taking care of the water quality we are receiving. But what about uh, if I'm spilling oil in the tap? We don't have enough awareness in our houses. Uh, what if we could have uh, any kind of indicator saying, well, you, you need to pay more because you are costing more to the system. Not because of the water you are using, but because of the low quality that you are, uh, you are re-entering uh, re in, in the system. So I think that maybe taking care of all the, uh, including all those indicators uh, of the cycle that you were mentioning and make, uh, could be used to make a smart tarification of water, not only thinking of consumption, but also in the, in the quality that we are putting back. Yeah. It's, um, you have an uh, opinion on the, how much the people are interested in, the, in knowing what quality of the water they are going to send back to the environment? Yeah, again, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I think there is, um, I think the interest has always been there, but I think there's a growing interest now in people being able to see the impact they're having and hopefully the positive impact of making the behavior change because that's ultimately what's, what's mm -hmm. behind this. It's a change in behavior at a household level, an individual level, a business level. Um, if people can see the benefits of that, mm -hmm. they're more likely uh, to, do, uh, to do a little bit more. There was just one, one point I was uh, going to raise in, in relation to the, the sort of integration. We've talked about water and, and uh, energy a lot, understandably, um, and it, it's, a, it's a question really, not, not maybe for answering in this panel, but I'm not sure, we talk a lot about technology and, and joining things up, I'm not sure how much collaboration actually goes on person to person um, in cities when we're planning the future uh, of areas. Um, uh, certainly in the past, it's been the case that utilities and, and providers have, have gone their own way and we've tried to sort of retrofit, if you like, the integration further down. Um, I would like to think, it's not my particular field, I'd, I'd like to think that we're beyond that now and that people are talking more before we move to the technological solutions. Yeah, there is one point where the uh, utilities are working much more than before. 
is that they are uh, exchanging their, their um, mapping system mm. and they try to coordinate better <coughs> when they have to work on the, on the road because it was before you were hoping, there was the electricity coming and hopping the road and then they, they, they make the road again and then the water was coming and then the gas was coming. And then, so now there is a, a better uh, coordination thanks to mapping and, and capacity to exchange the information that was not existing. I mean, you were some, so that, that it is in the work or the, I would yeah. say the network uh, in terms, that's true. On the rest is, is still quite, yeah. I do agree, quite difficult. I have a question about um, uh, tarification and price. So probably it, um, I would like to answer to that. Should, could the, pre, the price of water increase? That is a very, very big debate. Most of place in the world doesn't bill water to the cost. I mean, the cost is higher than the, mm. the, the price. And of course, that it is not really, um, on long term, it's complex for two reasons. First, because you, you have someone who has to pay for the difference. So, and second, because the client doesn't know, doesn't have the information. Mm -hmm. If you give the right uh, price, which is the cost uh, most of time, uh, then people adapt. If you subsidize water, people are, are, are throwing it away. They don't know, they, don't, they think it is no cost. Mm -hmm. And you see some countries where there is no meter. How can you build water on square meter and not on cubic meters? I mean, uh, if you had to build electricity on square meters, <laughs> I tell you that you, they would let the uh, window open and the life would be nice. So we are still in water in, in that situation because the water is very political and we still have some problems to, to try to remember that it should be at this cost. It should be, the tarification should do that. Because then people start to understand that if they reduce their consumption, it will reduce their bill. Mm -hmm. And so you have example of 400 liters per day per person, no meters, Buenos Aires. Uh, 400 liters per person, meters, but in the United States, and you see in Germany, 100 liters per day. There are no so big difference between uh, Germany and, and United States. But there are some places in United, like uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, where they are now, they have been developing awareness, so they are at the uh, same level uh, of standards. So price is very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, at least the price which uh, led to cover uh, the, the cost. And, um, and the second, and eventually, you could have some variation of your price depending if it is uh, night, day, winter, summer. There used to be differences. And well, it has been, uh, but the, the price is very important. And I was saying that for us, the a smart price of electricity make us react. And I'm sure that it would be the same for water. I mean, there is no reason. Uh, is the unavailability of water because it isn't there or because it is unusable? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not easy to destroy water. If you have one cubic meter of water and you want to, that cubic meter to disappear, it costs you a lot of money in electricity to make it go to, uh, to the wind. I mean, it's not so easy to do. But to destroy the quality of water is very easy. Mm -hmm. And it was what you were saying. With very few things, you can destroy the quality. And sometimes we forget to speak about quality. Mm -hmm. uh, many people think that it's only quantity. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, the, some part of some, sometimes there is water, but the quality is such that you can't use it. Wells which have been polluted. Uh, but the uh, most, now the technologies let us to do good water, even with very uh, polluted water. But of course it can cost, it can cost a lot. So the message most of time is try to be, to conserve water, but also be careful because you can destroy cube really uh, very easily with, uh, with few element. You can destroy a, a swimming pool or whatever. It's not so difficult. So the, the, um, that's true that the quality is probably, and you said that, mm -hmm. the quality is a, 
very, very important too. Okay. Um, and uh, maybe a question about developing countries. Uh, why don't, the uh, question is, can we make smart technology at lower price for developing countries? Uh, I wish we could, but I, I would tell you that it's probably more your, your business to try to bring us to we, uh, people from water, some lower price uh, for those technology. Water is not expensive. You have said that the bill is uh, wonderful. So we need low-cost technology uh, mm. because in order to be using those smart technology. Thank you. We, we want to leave you with some burning questions while the soup is still warm to make sure that we can take advantage of the fact that we've discovered that it's not only a technology challenge and not only a social inclusion challenge, it's also an economic challenge. How do we price these things, whether it's a kilowatt hour of energy or a unit of water? Uh, this is going to come up in the big way in the afternoon uh, as we talk about the cost of remaking mobility systems in cities to make them smarter and greener uh, while securing all of the systems at the same time. So on behalf of uh, the rest of us, thank you very much for the panel. That was outstanding. We're going to now break for lunch to the fifth floor. Join me in thanking them for us.